So most of the people in the audience here right, are recruiters in the TA space. Um, in fact, how many of us are that? Um, I think probably if we run a quick poll on it, I would imagine uh, most of us are, I mean, hands up if you are actually in TA or are you working in some other field? Um, yeah, absolutely. So like 60, 70 percent of us are there. So, you know, what we haven't done during the course of these three days is actually pay attention to someone who's working as a TA leader and what that person has learned in this weird sort of 80, 12, 18 months we've had. Um, and I'm delighted to welcome to the stage uh, Jinder Maceda, uh, director of TA at Bullhorn. Um, and of course, uh, Ginger is is a leader of the TA department in this business. We're also having to manage now a distributed organization. So we're going to be talking about, you know, what it is to be a leader in this remote first world. Um, so Ginger, I've eaten too much of your time already. So I'm going to get off stage ASAP. Um, you uh, you um, <laughs> take it away with your talk and I'll come back when you need me. Okay. So I'm just going to be right here um, and then we'll pop back in. Is that right? Sounds perfect to me. Thank you so much, Hung. I appreciate it. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm going to quickly share my screen. And let's see if I can make this work. Let's see. Are, is everybody able to see this here? Okay, great, great. Well, again, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. And, and before I jump in, just a quick five minutes about me. Um, as Hung mentioned, I'm the head of Global TA at Bullhorn. I'm super happy to be here. I've just been at the company about three months. But prior to this, I will say, the majority of my career has been sent, uh, excuse me, been spent managing remote teams. Um, so I've had lots of um, experience trying to engage my team from around the world. I've had big, big teams um, within Europe, the UK, within APAC and US, and I've had super small teams. And, and the one thing I want to say again before kind of jumping into how I manage that or how how I've kind of gone through that is it's not just about the pandemic, right? Um, I think prior to that, even if someone is tied to an office within your organization, they might not necessarily be sitting in the same office as you as a leader. So lots of these tips and tricks are relevant even once we get beyond kind of the current situation we're in today. So hopefully I'll be able to provide some insight um, for all of you, my fellow TA leaders, and how we work to engage our teams um, in a remote capacity. So a little bit about Bullhorn. Um, as a company, we're over 20 years old, and I'll say one of the key things I really wanted to drive home was, I think we have something special in our culture here, and it was the reason that I joined the company. Um, we're, we're incredibly um, flat in terms of collaboration and innovation. And, um, you know, the, we do a lot here to make sure that as a company, even beyond the TA team, stay connected with one another. Um, but we, we've been doing this for over 20 years and it's been uh, an amazing journey for so many people. And as a new newbie kind of coming in, I'm enjoying kind of learning um, about this experience and it's been a super fun ride. But from a remote workforce capability, some interesting facts about Bullhorn. So prior to the pandemic, about 30% of our workforce was working in a remote capacity. And for us, that means they weren't necessarily tied to an office. But like many of you, you might have sales um, segments of your organization that don't necessarily sit within the office. So prior to the pandemic, we were managing a somewhat remote workforce prior but once that hit and kind of in our current state, we're probably about 50-50, which has been super interesting just in the shift of the workforce from learning how to work in proximity with one another, but now kind of managing how we stay connected when we're not sitting in the desk next to each other. And then another kind of interesting shift for us as a company is over 90% of our current roles now 
are more wide open to permanent remote um, within a specific region, even within a state. And I think where that's driving us to as an organization is to think about these things. And as leaders, how do we pull the right levers to make sure we don't lose all the benefits that we once had kind of sitting side by side within the office? And just a little bit about my team. I, you know, they are the light of my life. Uh, hopefully they're all with us today, but um, I'm super proud. A small, scrappy team. I lead them of about six um, today. Um, and we have very high expectations as a recruiting team. Um, we hire a few hundred people per year, um, and they are just off the charts amazing. So, um, you know, we're all kind of through that scrappy environment, but just to give you a picture of, of how we're working today. Quick sh um, snapshot of Bullhorn's global footprint for those of you who are not familiar. Um, we do have a gl global nature workforce. This is important, as everyone probably knows. Uh, we believe in the proximity to the customer. I think it's important um, to have a team that understands our customer at the ground level. And so when we think about things like language capabilities and just understanding the nuances of the particular region we're operating in, being a global workforce will always be a priority for us. And, and, and we're continuing to grow that footprint, which is really exciting for us as, as a company. And then, of course, uh, as a TA team. So what are some of those challenges in a remote environment? You are all feeling it. Your teams are feeling it. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes, and I refer back to it all the time when I think about how I lead my team, is we're all kind of going through this storm. We're doing it differently and not just again, not just specific to the pandemic, but I think about any challenge that a company is facing. So, hey, we're going to open up a new location or, hey, we're going to change our revenue targets. The whole company is behind this one storm or one big opportunity or challenge. But each one of us within that workforce are navigating how we get there differently or we have different things about our role or our lives that are impacting how we get through that storm. So I think a lot of that um, is heavy and kind of wears on all of us as a team and, and as, as leaders. Um, everything is on video. Here we are on video. I think um, a lot of us can kind of, it wears on us, kind of having to look at ourselves every day, looking at our team every day. Um, this is a new thing, um, believe it or not, for, for many people who haven't been in a remote position before. So um, just being aware of that. Um, and it's easy to switch off, but um, do we unplug? I mean, obviously, we're all aware that uh, many of us, our remote offices are our homes. And so we can very well walk out that door. But it's just as easy to walk back in. So I think we all understand that challenge and how to create that barrier and boundary for ourselves and our team. Um, certainly a fog um, is around you and can be around you because you're talking about work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sometimes you can get lost in that. Um, and the last thing I'll just say about all of the challenges we're aware of um, uh, this is specific to the pandemic. Don't forget, it's a pandemic. So the, the stress of it in of itself um, can, can add a layer that we as leaders need to be really mindful of as we're navigating through with our teams. So how do we solve this? Um, how do we solve this for our team? So what I'm going to share with you today are super simple, very practical ways that you can impact your team today. Um, so many of these things you may already be doing. Um, I'd love to network with you afterwards. I'd love to learn from each of you as well. But I just wanted to share a few things that I've learned along my journey of managing remote teams that I've found to be the most impactful. So the first pillar that I start with is empathy. Um, it is very important as a leader managing remote teams to meet your recruiting team where they are. Um, so this is listen to understand, kind of seek to understand, make sure that you are opening up your mind, um, really putting yourself in their shoes as you're moving through kind of your challenges and driving to your objectives. 
So a couple of ways that I have used empathy within my kind of leadership style, as I mentioned, listen, listen, listen. So I've even taken our one-on-ones and I challenge each of you to maybe try this approach if you're not already. Instead of dictating the agenda, have your recruiter dictate the agenda. Here are the three things that are important to me as a recruiter to bring to the table to you today versus me kind of setting the goals in a way that in from my perspective, have them lead the conversation. And then your role in this, ask questions. Don't solve everything. This is a problem I know I have. I am a rescuer. And many of you may also be this. So I'm quick to say, well, then here's the five things you should do to fix that problem. Try, try, challenge yourself in your next one-on-one with your recruiter to zip it <laughs> and to listen and then ask questions to help that recruiter solve it themselves. So what did the hiring manager say? How did you, how, what did you say next? How do you think you might do that differently next time? So instead of solving the problem for them, lead the way. And I think in that act of itself, you're demonstrating that you're listening and you are demonstrating that you're supporting them and you're actually meeting them where they are. So that is a big one for me that I, I really need to my muscle around, but it's a great one that I feel like has worked. Um, simple things, no video day. I and mean, like I talked about earlier, we're all kind of tired of seeing ourselves on the screen. That goes the same for your team. Try a no video day, a no meeting day to create space for your team. And one thing I've recently done is video optional. Some people don't mind it. Some people like it. Some people just express that they want to feel the ability to shut off their video if they need to do something special. But if you're setting this tone that everybody needs to be on video and paying attention, then it can add a layer of stress that is really not necessary. So balance that. Um, and, and I suggest that. Normalize our environment distractions. I think we've all seen those videos where kids come flying in, dogs come flying in. And so, you know, acknowledge it, celebrate it, you know, be, be grateful that we're all in this environment where we where we have the ability to have that proximity to the things that matter most to us. So uh, make sure that um, that you are um, being open to open to some of those distractions. Um, time zone awareness. I know specific to this crowd, this is going to be super important. I have had to work throughout my career journey to be very aware of regional differences. But I would also say within even the same time zone, be aware of other meetings that you might be putting on the calendar that are interfering with things like lunch hour or the end of the day. Um, even within a region, sometimes we'll see meetings constantly on the lunch hour. So so as a leader, we want to we want to set the tone that, you know, maybe lunch hour is off limits or before eight is off limits, after five is off limits. And how do we start to infuse that kind of a, a think um, in our schedule? Um, one other thing and, and, and move forward. When I was with Amazon, I implemented this um, with our team and it was a big hit. Um, so you may be holding one-on-ones with your recruiters on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis, your teams. Um, try this. Uh, we implemented uh, what we call an office hour. Um, so one day a week for one hour a day, um, I would open an office hour where I would have my um, conference on Anybody could pop in or pop out with a quick question, and I was there to answer it, which minimized the number of meetings that they had with me directly. And it also enabled something that I think we're seeing because we're not sitting next to one another. It could be that if I were in an office, I could buzz by um, Kelly's desk and say, hey, um, quick question about Leah suggested this or that, and then I could quick response. So in this environment, it has to be a call or a meeting. So instead of that, set up like an office hour that can be flexible and anybody can pop in or out as you go. So just a, 
a quick few things around empathy and kind of meeting people where they are and creating that um, ease. My second pillar, when I think about um, enabling my team to be more productive in this remote environment is purpose. So we are all looking for that reason to get out of bed in the morning. And some of our recruiting roles and for our teams can be very redundant in the workflow. So um, what I like to do is make sure that I'm creating that, that carrot or whatever that piece is and driving people to kind of um, hit those goals. So a few ways that I like to kind of set the tone in terms of purpose is these big team goals and i'm not talking about your strategy or hey, we're going to hit 100 percent of hiring plan this year those are great and long term i'm i'm suggesting take one month and say last month we hit 50 hires this month it's going to be 55. let's go team and make it a really fun challenge or get creative or whatever that like goal might be for your team to pull together and focus on do lots of those um sell up the wins i have lots of people on my team today and and in the past that really that recognition and reward is so important um, especially when you think about recruiting right i i can say this because you're all in ta leadership sometimes recruiting can be a thankless job um, you have your wins and your losses right and so we want to make sure that we're creating a lot of happy moments for our recruiters um, and and so celebrating wins like uh, for me currently I'm even doing things so simple which is just a Friday roundup and I just post this in our team slack channel and I just talk about all the offers that went out this week or those special moments or hey somebody got their very first offer out the door and they just started um, so those those are the simple things that I like to enable um, and, and again, it doesn't require that we're all in the office in order to do it. So making sure that as a leader, you're staying engaged, track everything. I measure everything. I'm a big um, data fan, uh, fan and I love to pull the numbers around that. So um, make sure that people have a goal set or they know where they stand in terms of their KPIs and, and that awareness will help give them that purpose. Um, at the core. Um, we've implemented some relay race activities. I think um, for, for me, this is about um, creating like um, a specific project and perhaps it's around employment branding that requires one person to take the first lap of this piece of the project and then it's a handoff to another person. And so that sense of purpose means somebody's waiting for me to complete this step. And so I'm more I'm more engaged and I want to lean forward and complete that so nobody's waiting on me. So again, it's just all going back into this sense of purpose. Um, and then uh, a couple of other things here. Um, I, I love the idea of switching seats, creating that engagement like, hey, we're going to swap tech recruitment um, and, and we're going to give that a try. And this person's going to go over to marketing recruitment and we're going to do this for the next 30 days um, and and again giving that person that that purpose uh, I'm stretching myself I'm expanding my my learning here which is 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 an exciting thing for the team and I've seen work quite well and the last thing I'm just going to touch on here is fun um, so I you know we can't stress this enough I can't count the number of virtual happy hours I've been to and I know we're all exhausted um, of those but uh, they, they are great, um, but there are other ways to create those fun moments. And I wanted to share a couple of our um, ideas and things that I've seen in the past with all of you um, as well. Maybe some of you have participated in this, but there are lots of vendors out there now that are providing things like trivia games, and I absolutely love that platform. And what I love the most about it is it creates that purpose. It gives that engagement stickiness. So we're, we're not looking at ourselves necessarily on the camera. We're looking at the game. So there's a competitive nature to it. It's a fun adventure. And, and we recently did it, uh, did one version of this where um, our CEO led, led the call, which I thought was really amazing. And it, it was a great morale boost. And 
um, super fun opportunity um, for everybody to get level of visibility as well. Um, box at my door. This is something that uh, I think we've all kind of done, but there's lots of vendors out there that um, will provide snacks on delivery. And when you think about not being in the office, you know, this is something that's a luxury when you have that. You can grab a snack. Um, but if you had uh, brought to the table something where I can actually open my door and I, you know, it's demonstrating to me that the company is thinking about me, they're enabling me and providing me that comfort that I might not necessarily have at home. Um, really, really do more there. It goes a long, long way um, in, in terms of those. Um, we've all done theme days. Um, I will share this other example um, of a water cooler. So um, right now uh, we're doing this kind of format with our HR team in general where we're just calling it the water cooler and we're getting together for these meetings where um, every meeting someone provides a presentation about something about themselves, like something that they want to share that's good for us to learn about them, something unique about themselves. And they share that through a presentation. And what we do as a team is that allows us to get to a more personal level with everybody. And then it really allows us to kind of bond. Um, and, and I think in that, again, it's closing a gap when you don't have those office moments or those water cooler moments to be able to get to know, uh, hey, Ginger, how's your son doing? Or, hey, you know, how's the new puppy? Um, you can really kind of get to know somebody. And that, that in of itself will help your team to be more productive because we feel bonded in that way. So it's, it's a great um, opportunity um, for you to infuse just those personal moments with your team. And, and it's gone a long way for us. Um, one thing I will share, um, I'm seeing this uh, in a few companies too, which is around um, a simple concert and, and it doesn't have to be a giant concert. Um, I know at Amazon had um, hired some very famous people to play um, on, on a webinar um, before, but it can be very simple. There's a ton of artists out there that might be willing to, to, to do uh, like a guitar song or something or a couple hours or whatever it is. And just take like, a moment and say, hey, this hour, we're going to listen to this music. And it doesn't have to be on video. But while they're working, we're all listening to the same songs. Like, again, creating that synergy with your team and that um, something for you to talk about later, right? We've all experienced this. So, so I think, you know, at the end of the day, when I think about fun. It's about creating those shared experiences, learning about one another, and just creating those moments that we don't necessarily have um, in our current remote environment. So just as a wrap up um, to all of this, I mean, uh, forgive yourselves, right? We're all learning how to navigate this. I learn every day from my team, every single day, um, what works, what doesn't work, what they're tired of. Um, not everyone's going to enjoy everything, so not everybody's going to love the trivia game, and not everybody's going to love some of the big goals that you're setting out there, and that's okay. But we learn and and we grow, and the idea is to do something, um, right? Really acknowledge that your team is in a different place right now, and they may be experiencing it differently. But make sure that you create those sticky moments as a leader. That's your job. That's our job. Um, mirror your culture and live your values. This is something I, again, I just admire uh, about Bullhorn is we definitely um, believe in our values. We talk about our values and whatever method you're choosing to engage your team in a remote way, layer on those values and make sure it makes sense for your team. Um, pulse check, temperature check, um, always check in with your team. I always start my one-on-one. -on -one how are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, it, it's a it's such a short question to ask, but it's so important. You know, as we're all going through this, give them the space to really kind of open up to you. Um, make sure we're doing that, and then again, let your team lead the way. Um, so, so for me is 
I, I'm a servant leader. I, I want to make sure that I'm supporting my team the way that they need me to support you. So, so th they'll, they'll start to give you these ideas. There's a ton more out there. Um, but these were just a few of my um, simple suggestions, practical suggestions. I hope you find it helpful. Um, and, uh, and I, again, I'm grateful for all those experiences and, and some of these has worked for me. Um, but that is it from me. 